Good evening, everyone. Ah, tell it all. Let's just have a few minutes. Come on, come on. It's a nice, cool evening in the United States, also. Ah, you check it out. Ah, check it out. Let's just have a few minutes. Come on, come on. Let's just have a few minutes. Come on, come on. Well, it. Uh, we're going to continue with our teaching about walking in the supernatural. And we were talking last week about a scripture that we find in the book of Mark. Now this this scripture that we find in Mark is is uh, very revealing to us because it tells us about what Jesus expects from his believers. Okay, again, I want you to know that this is not my opinion. This is what Jesus says. Okay, so in your Bible, turn to the book of Mark, chapter 16. Yes. And we have been speaking of verse <laughs> 17. Yeah. To me, it's so clear what Jesus says here. He says, the, the, these signs will follow those who believe in me. In my name, they will cast out demons, and they will speak with new tongues. Just repeating, just giving a little bit of a review of what we've done so far, we have looked at Casting out demons, and last week we looked at speaking in tongues. Ken had a question last week about uh, speaking in tongues and uh, I want to know if there's anybody have a, a, a question about what we talked about last week, or maybe a, a new question that you want to ask today. Okay, about speaking in tongues. เออสลาวกาเจียวล่ะเออกาเจียวเป็นมั้ยสลาวอ่าสลาวเนี่ยเว้ยนานิกาวิชอ่าสุญญาติมาคลุเวอลงแผ่ไปอยู่เว้ย
So his question is that from the book of Acts chapter 2. So in that chapter, uh, the disciples of Jesus Christ were filling of the Holy Spirit and they preached the gospel. So the people from many countries, many places, they come to them. When they spoke of, when they speak out, they understand what they are saying in their own language. And even Peter, he speak the word of God to the people from many different places, different tribes. But uh, to Peter speaking, everybody understand as their own language. So how do you think of this? Well, no. It, it, it is, when, when, uh, it when is from said, the spirit's, spirit's gift, or how do you yeah, think when, of that? That's what when, his question. Peter, when Peter stands up and he starts to preach, he's he's speaking in his native tongue. He's not speaking in a in a different language. It was his native tongue that he was preaching. Mm. Uh, when when they were in the upper room, when the disciples were in the upper room and the, and the Holy Spirit came upon them, they, they uh, left that upper room and they went out into the, let's, let's turn there, let's, let's go to the book of Acts. So mm. Acts chapter 2. Verse 4 of chapter 2 says they, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Can I all call you Joby? You who cup way or call you that we gave you or half who be lale or half who you who talk. Now, what they, the tongues that they received at that point was their, 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 their prayer language that God gave them to be able to speak to him. Okay. Verse 5, it says there were many Jews in Jerusalem from every part of the world. I mean, it, they, from all parts of, of the world, they were there. And as these people were speaking in tongues, they recognized that some of them were speaking their native language from another place of the world. Okay. There was 120 that was up in the upper room. 120. So there was a possibility of 120 different languages being spoken. And, and, and I say that to say this, that some of them were speaking in a known language and some of them were speaking in an unknown language. Every language has a meaning. It's not just sounds, it's meaning. <laughs> and, and verse 8, uh, uh, it says, how is it that we, we hear them speaking a language of which we were born? 
Nahutea lili asuyo pola ku mumu vi tokota gakavi kakili de kana eh io kolua moviu. So there was a, a, a variety of languages that were present. Mm. No to call a lai to chevy u tiju hu uvitinya kolu. No, no. It wasn't all of them speaking one foreign language, but each one was speaking a different language. I'm sorry? Each one was speaking a different language. Mm. What were they speaking? What did these people hear? Verse 11 says what they heard. They heard them in our own tongue speaking of the mighty deeds of God. Verse 11. Verse 11. Karate chole aracho ushabi ujabi kante pa olo suyo suyo lavita nahu asu suyo lavita nahu asu yo vitoko gakabi yo te yo hukubi yo te kukabi cho yo huto yo lavi cho asu yo vitoko ke yo wako kabi lo te. So what, what were they doing? They were speaking to God declaring his mighty deeds. Is that from verse 11, right? Yes. Maybe a little bit different. Oh, yeah, the same. Yoko Chevy, we shall be Ujavi Kankovich, we shall be Omi Opong, Tola Vitichi, a movie. Okay, so it was a declaration of what God uh, was doing. Um, they were magnifying God for what he was doing. It wasn't a prophetic utterance that they were trying to bring about to the church. It was a language that they were praising God for uh, what they were experiencing at that point in time. And one of the great deeds of God that they were proclaiming was the fulfillment of Joel chapter 2, verse 28, the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So then Peter stands up and he addresses the people of Judea. Okay, and he speaks a language that he was born with. He's not speaking in tongues at this point in time. He's speaking to the men of Judea. And he explains to them this what you're hearing is the fulfillment of prophecy that was given. 700 years earlier. Um, I know by experience, my, my prayer language that I speak uh, changes sometimes. It is, not, it is not the same always. Mm. Uh, 
And sometimes some of the, the sound that comes out of my, my mouth sounds familiar, but I do not know what I'm saying. You see, Ali, when you're speaking uh, the, the language that you have grown up with, to me, it's just a bunch of noise. Mm. It, it sounds like you know you make sounds that I do not make. Mm. And and to 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 hear you, it's to me like it's oh, this is foolishness. Mm. But for you, it's very real. So when we are speaking to God these mysteries, we are speaking in a language we do not know what we are saying it's bypassing our logic see the mind of man will logically try to understand i'm sorry the mind the mind of man will want to understand logically what is being said. But when I speak in tongues, I do not understand what I am saying. Yeah, and that causes within me a conflict. Because my mind wants to know what I'm saying. I, by my will, I am pronouncing, I am making sounds with my mouth, but my mind is saying, this is foolish. <laughs> but to speak in tongues, I must step out in faith. It's not like the Holy Spirit takes control of your tongue and your mouth and makes you speak something that you are not in agreement with. Faith is required to speak in tongues. Faith puts you in a place of trust. And I have to decide. I must decide. I am going to speak in a tongue that I do not know and I do not understand. Even though my mind is saying, oh, this is foolishness. 
I want you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Let me get my glasses. I have to have my glasses. Could you please? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First Corinthians okay. chapter 14. Could you please bring the microphone near you because this sounds a little just yeah, I cannot hear you louder than before. Okay. Could you please bring near you more? How's that? Great. Is that better? Okay. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 14. Look at verse 14. Look at verse 14. It says, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. And it goes on to say, but my mind is unfruitful. It, when we when we speak, we speak using our bodies to make sound. We use our lungs to produce air. I'm sorry. We use our lungs to produce air. That mm. air flows <clears throat> over the vocal cords. Mm, I have to use my tongue in such a way to to manipulate those sounds mm. I have to open my mouth <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I don't open my mouth nothing comes out I, I have to use the cheeks. The way I use my lips is all in pronunciation of a sound. Pronunciation. So right now, Ali, you're making sounds I don't understand. Sure. <laughs> Nothing. But you're still using your lungs, you're using your vocal cords, you're using your mouth, you're using your tongue to make those. Now, to speak in tongues, there are two, two, um, what's the word I want to use? Two fountains 
two fountains that that produce sound your spirit or your mind could you please again <laughs> okay there are uh, okay for me to speak in tongues i have to use one of two different sources mm -hmm. one of those sources i am very familiar with i do it every day I choose to speak English. I know English. But I also know Spanish. And because I know those two languages, I can speak either one. But when I speak English, I must select the words that I want to pronounce. There is a message that I want transmitted. So I search my memory and I find words that I want to use. But then I have to take those words and I have to put them grammatically correct. Uh, grammatically go with your lay toko ta kare sunaga to opon yobia kuchebi and i use what i have been taught to do that i bring a word and i i make it correct nata su malami kele na shiavi toko ta yule sunaga vi okolo so sunaga to opon na kakubi yu now when i speak spanish Again, I have to go to my memory and I have to remember words. Sounds that are completely different from what I'm used to in English. And then I have to once again put those grammatically correct and it's different than english mm. they have different rules than we do in english so in all of this communication i am using my mind greatly to communicate mm. I have to watch how the sound is pronounced. Sometimes when I'm speaking Spanish a lot, my tongue starts to get very sensitive or actually it starts to cut against my teeth mm. because very <laughs> okay. i'm using my tongue differently to speak spanish words than i'm accustomed to mm. 
But when I speak in my prayer language, I do not have to think about what words I'm going to use. Actually, I do not know. I don't have to worry about putting it grammatically correct. I'm not using my mind. I'm not using my knowledge of languages. So my logic, I have to set aside and not use my logic. I must trust that my spirit is praying. And but I still have to use my lungs. I still have to use my vocal cords. I still have to use my tongue and my lips and my my cheeks. And the Holy Spirit will allow me to make sounds according to his will. I have control. I have control over my body. I have control over my vocal cords and my mouth. I can say no. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and, and you see a lot of people say no to the Holy Spirit because they do not understand. Their mind is going to say, this is stupid. Why are you doing this? But your spirit says, I will do this. I I don't care what it sounds like. I don't care what my my what comes out of my mouth. What I care about is flowing with the Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm talking to you right now in English. I'm thinking about how to teach you. Did you understand any of that? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, but Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca's down there and she understood everything I said. Okay, okay. But in both ways, I used my mind to 
think, how am I going to transmit this? But now I'm going to speak in tongues. My, my, spirit, my spirit is connected with the Holy Spirit. And he's, he, he is always in communication with the Father. Always. Okay. Always means at all times he is communicating. Now, take for example, this communication of the spirit is always going on. And I can join into that communication whenever I want to. Or I can leave that communication whenever I want to. I choose to enter into the spirit yeah, can. to leave. Yeah, hey. It's a choice that I make. Nothing. <laughs> okay. Ken, did you understand that? No. no. I didn't understand that. Yo, don't go. But I entered into the praying in the spirit. See, I look at Cook Gavley, Cookole. Toya Namaha told Jay or Don Colojo of it to Hatch. I still had to pronounce, I still had to use my, my vocal cords, but my mind was not connected. Ken, I know that you are full of the Holy Spirit, and I know you pray in tongues. Can you pray in tongues just for a little bit? Mm -hmm. Now, Ken can pray in tongues right now. But he's he's having this conflict in his mind. Yes. What, what is the people going to think about me? Okay, okay, It's going to sound silly. They're not going to understand anything I say. Now, 
can can speak in tongues right now. Would you try? Right now, right? Yes. You see the battle going on? Yes. Go ahead, try it. <laughs> Amen. See what he did. He stepped into, he came into the Holy Spirit and he left the Holy Spirit. You have control over tongues. Now, Ken did not understand what he was saying, and neither did I understand what he was saying. But there is a time when God wants you to pronounce in a different language something that needs to be interpreted. You know, you know, your spirit knows if it has an urgency. Your spirit knows this is not for you, this is for the people. And then you you limit yourself just to pronounce what the Holy Spirit is saying to pronounce. Your spirit is under obligation to speak only what the Spirit of God says to speak forth. I am still making sounds with my body, but I know that the tongue that I'm saying has a meaning that somebody needs to interpret. Hmm. I must know the people that are around me and know their giftings. And if, if that comes upon me, that urgency, then then I must look around and see if there's somebody that I know can interpret. Mm. I must trust that in the same way I'm receiving this urgency, they are being empowered by the gift to be able to interpret. But if there is no one to interpret, then I must pray. I must pray. Yeah, 
I must ask God for the interpretation of what is in my heart that has to come out. I can, if God permits, interpret my own tongue. Interpretation means that I, uh, I will proclaim the message. Interpretation go vele tsuku you to ve or long over ta kuve tiata na to yo ve chita tsuku jove or kolo sunara to be you. Right now you're hearing Ali interpret. That means word for word trying to change things word for word. Chiteku tsuku you to ve kuve cho chiteku ali kalina le na tu kala fu to ko yo cheve no hunamara ya ka yo yo cheve to la tia shuvinatia. That word for word is translation or taken into another language. Interpretation means to give the meaning. To interpret a dream, you give the meaning of the dream. I'm sorry? To interpret a dream, you know, yeah. a dream, to say what it is to interpret it means to give what it means what what is the meaning of this dream hmm. so when someone interprets tongues it is not a word by word translation. It is the meaning of the tongue coming forth. Mm. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Sure, yes. Could you is please give me any questions say? about this? Yeah. Any questions? Could you please give me two minutes that I will explain them because last week they haven't been here. So, yes. Can I go get some coffee while you're doing that? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I'll do that. So, uh, bigger at the Bama to what they be a lady, but as a guy, I'm your daughter, and I'm your she did it. ตมยัวอาจารย์ตมยัวอาจารย์ตมยัวอาจารย์ตมยัวอาจารย์ตมยัวอาจารย์ตมยัวอาจารย์ตมยัวอาจารย์ตมยัวอาจารย์ตมย
Good. Yeah, no, I got it. Well, you was doing a good, you was doing a good job of interpreting. Praise the Lord. Because you were proclaiming the message in a way that they could understand. Lord, yes. So I don't want them to be confused. So I'm just explaining to them. So now, is there any questions? Mm, let me let me ask you a question. Mm. Do you do you, do you think God wants you to speak in tongues? No, don't let you. You will be that's a question. Answer? Does God want you to speak in tongues? I'm sorry? Does God want you to speak in tongues? I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting an answer from the audience. No, <laughs> Yes. Well, thank you, Ken. <laughs> How about in Ali's house? Yes. <laughs> Does he want you to speak in tongues? Everybody is silent. Yeah, because <laughs> most of the people here, they have a family with this. So it is. this is very strange for them. Mm -hmm. This is the first time they thought about it. Speaking Tom, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the, it still doesn't change the question. Yeah. The question is, does God want you to speak in tongues? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You see, you've got to come to a place where you say, yes, God wants us to speak in tongues. If you do not, if you do not come to that place, where you realize that God wants you to speak in tongues, guess what? You're never going to speak in tongues. You'll never reach the maturity that God wants you to have. Okay. And you are actually being, being found guilty of saying, God, I don't believe you. Because God says, those who believe in me, they will. Speaking. 
not only the, does Jesus uh, want you to, he expects you to speak in tongues. Chile, you should know who called the doll of your chip, have you? If you're a believer, no, 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 you will all speak in tongues. No, 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 even though your denomination doesn't believe it. Even though, even though it might sound logically, this is crazy because you're a believer, you will do it. But enable the, the enablement to speak in tongues comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You cannot speak in tongues without having the enablement of the Holy Spirit to allow you to speak in tongues. I can speak in tongues for hours without mm. ending, speaking in tongues. And it doesn't cost me um, I don't have to make myself do it. My spirit is just praying, just, just praying. Because I am full of the Holy Spirit. I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. If you were forcing yourself to make these strange noises, you couldn't do that for hours at a time. It, it just wouldn't be possible. You could, fake it. you could fake it for a short time, but you couldn't continuously do it. Now, how do you get for the Holy Spirit? We have we have three minutes. Wow. <laughs> it, you know, it's not hard at all. We, we, we need to understand that Jesus wants us to be full of the Holy Spirit. And actually to be filled with the Holy Spirit is just uh, allowing him to have his way in our lives. Turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter Luca. 11. Luke, And this tells you how to be full of the Holy Spirit. Luke 11, starting in verse 9. And if you will read from verse 9 through verse 13, you will know how to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. 
But you will have to use faith. Yeah. Verse 9 says, For I say to you, ask, and it will be given. Knock and it will be open to you. Look at verse 10. Verse 10, very, very key verse. For everyone. Everyone who asks receives. And how about the how about the people in Myanmar that's seated around Ali's house? Will they receive if they ask? Mm. The Bible says everyone, everyone. There's no one outside. Will Rebecca receive in Mexico? Rebecca, Mexico, Mumilo, Chevy, Rebecca, y'all, Loco, what we Will the people in Thailand receive? Yes, if they will ask. Asking is our part. To ask means that I humble myself to know that it comes from him and I must ask to receive it. So can you receive tonight? Yes. If you ask, if you ask, you can receive in the privacy of your bedroom. And then speaking in tongues is that you will put to test the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You must choose to speak in tongues. And by faith, you enter into that flow of communication with God. It takes faith for you to receive what the Holy Spirit wants to give you. Know this, that the language that you will speak, you will not understand. But do not let that keep you from speaking. Speak. Open your mouth and speak. Stepping out in faith. Okay. I'm going to leave you with that today. That, that's, okay. a, that's a homework assignment. Go home. 
and get filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to do it privately in your communication with God. You need to do that. Now, if there was somebody around there that was full of the Holy Spirit and already speaking in tongues, then they could come and lay hands on you and help you receive. But it's not necessary. I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit without anybody laying hands on me. But there was a battle that day, a battle in my mind. Do I trust or do I resist? And the same will be with you. You will you will be affected the same way. Okay. Father, I ask you that every person that would ask that they would receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, you want to baptize every single believer in the Holy Spirit. Your word says that if they will ask, they will receive. We trust your word. We trust you to fulfill that which you promised. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Now, next week, when we come together, I'm going to ask, did anybody get filled with the Holy Spirit this week? Okay. <laughs> Let's watch. <laughs> I want to okay. see. Uh -huh. Go ahead and translate that. Okay. God bless you, and we will see you next week. Okay. Thank you very much, Pastor. You're welcome very much. May God bless you all. Bye bye, yeah. Rebecca. Bye, Ali. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Everyone. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Bye bye. Bye.